Hey people, hope you well in our hotel in Basel and I uh, thought I'd give you a little tour before we leave just so you can get an idea of what you can get for a hundred pound a night in Switzerland or in Basel at least. So let's have a look. So first and foremost there's Tammy, hello Tammy um, and we have a little seating area, a little desk for work. We had a bit of a problem with this because if you notice these extension, this extension cable has diamond shape sockets but we didn't have any of them and then down here you can see that there are some plug sockets here which we did end up using um, for our uh, for our European adapter but one of them didn't work so we had basically one socket for all of our stuff all of our electronics you've got a bed here it's very comfortable actually I will give them that you've got a mirror here hello <laughs> a little sink a bin and clear that before we leave you've got a cupboard with a safe in it so we're going to hang your clothes and then you have a little bathroom area with a bath in it well a shower sorry and it comes with some toiletries towels and a rack and stuff like that we also have a little balcony, which is quite nice. Got a little seating area there. And a good view. As you can see, we're on the fifth floor. So quite a way up. So what's the plan today? Well, we are going to go off and we are gonna go and do some exploration of Basel. We haven't got long here, just a couple of hours before our flight, but we wanted to go and see what this place is like and get an idea of what the city is like. We've not been here in the daytime. Um, every time we've been here, it's been like through the through the uh, hours of darkness. So uh, yeah, this is our proper chance to get a good look at it and see what it's like. But so far, it looks quite interesting. Hopefully we'll see more and be able to share it with you. So join us on this uh, on this little adventure. There's also bathrooms, uh, so I think, or separate bathrooms, so I think some of the, uh, the rooms have, um, don't have toilets, and instead they have, um, they have the basic facilities and then they have a, uh, a bathroom, which they use for which they can share. So here we are in Basel, well just crossing the bridge to go look into it further and there's a rather cool little statue there and a nice little bridge just here but yeah we booked out of our hotel room as you can probably tell uh, and wow do we have a story for you about this uh, this hotel it was uh, a nightmare to say the least so basically we originally booked that hotel off booking.com and we had a situation where uh, <laughs> we basically got scammed. And you're probably thinking, how did you get scammed on booking.com? Well, let me tell you how that happened. So basically, when we booked our hotel, we chose an option to book it in advance. So uh, book now, pay later. And that was completely fine. That's usually how things, how we, how we do things, and we never had a problem with that. Um, a couple of months later, probably about a month ago now, we got a message from the hotel, from booking.com itself saying to us oh um, we've lost your booking details you'll need to rebook no charge you just need to rebook so we can get your details back onto our system I was like that seems like a fair request so I started clicking things and uh, it looked like a short URL so a shortened version of a website link and uh, clicked it went to a page that looked exactly like booking.com's uh, you know, rebooking page pressed the button to re-enter my details and confirmed and uh, yeah that's when the madness began well thankfully I managed to save the day myself so uh, essentially what happened was was uh, I went to uh, my bank because uh, my bank was kind of knocking at my door and saying we need you to authorize a transaction um, so I was like a transaction okay so I went there and my bank was asking me to authorise £217 but in Bulgarian currency and 
I was like, okay, <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> so I rejected it, went back to the link and I noticed the link was this weird random old link, blah, 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 at booking.com or sorry, blah, 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 but book, dot booking.com dot web dot net, you know, you know, a, you know a phishing link when you see one, or at least you think you do. So how did me, a web developer, fall for that? Well, the message came directly from booking.com systems themselves. It didn't come from a text. It didn't end up in my spam box on my Google Mail or anything like that. It came into my actual booking.com message system. And it was such a convincing scam. I actually have to applaud them. It was, it was quite well, well, well crafted. But um, they gained access to booking.com's uh, email system. So I managed to prevent that from happening. I didn't get, the, they didn't get scammed. I called my bank, had my car canceled, got a new one sent out. There was no issues. But uh, in the process, obviously, I lost a lot of trust for, uh, for booking.com and how, how secure their site is. So uh, I ended up coming off of booking.com and installed it and I booked the hotel directly from, the, uh, from their website itself. But the difference between booking.com and our hotel was, because I was like, oh, it's slightly cheaper to do it from the hotel itself. Maybe we're paying the middleman on booking.com, but no. It wasn't actually that, <laughs> very nice. It was actually because uh, booking.com includes the city of Barzell tax, which is like 15 quid. Um, whereas the hotel wasn't including that. We had to pay that when we arrived, we didn't know that. So we had a, what you'd say an unexpected charge when we arrived. Uh, so getting here was uh, a bit stressful, but the hotel wasn't the only thing we had a problem with. No sorry. it was also the, uh, the trains themselves to Lauterbrunnen. So if you watched our previous video, you would have seen that we uh, took a train to Lauterbrunnen, which is a little village in the Alps. And um, ooh, very nice, nice little fountain. We're gonna have a close look at that in a minute. And um, we, we booked a train through a company called SBB, um, or SBB, <laughs> I think it's called. Or s -b -b <laughs> they say it in Germany after maybe someone can correct me in the uh, thingies but uh, in the comments but um, yeah basically uh, went through a bit of a nightmare of those guys as well so uh, <laughs> booking.com and SBB so basically what happened was I went to SBB to pay for my train tickets and I realized you could buy a saver pass which basically allows you to travel for the whole day around certain areas of, uh, of Switzerland and um, this way um, and I was like oh that's a good deal I'll do that so put my details in went to pay got taken to my bank to authorize the payment I did just that and then how oh, very nice I'll quickly show you and then I was uh, once I'd authorised the payment, sent back to the page where the booking, you know, where I was to, to finish off the booking, and uh, it said, error, your payment could not be completed, please try again. I was like, hmm, okay, fine. One of the biggest rail companies in Switzerland, which itself is one of the most richest countries in the world. Okay. I'll go walk over here, Tom's trying to take a video, and uh, she's got my narration in the background. <laughs> Um, one of the biggest uh, companies in Switzerland, you know, I'll trust their judgment. So um, I did what they said and I, I went to pay again. I went through, and so I went through that entire process. So uh, I was sent through to my bank, authorised the payment. I need to be sent back through to the, uh, did you just whistle at me like a dog? <laughs> yeah, well, I did actually answer, so yeah, it did work. But. Um, and uh, well, yeah, went through to the uh, payments, you know, the acceptance screen, and then got sent back to the same place again to tell me that my payment had failed and to try again. I thought, before I try again, I'm just going to check with my bank to see if everything's okay. No unexpected charges. I doubt there is, but I will just make sure there's no unexpected charges that have come out. And lo and behold, I went to my bank and I was close to 300 quid down. I'd taken 150 quid twice out of my account. And I had no ticket. I had no booking confirmation, I had nothing. And so I started digging a bit deeper into this. And uh, there were so many people talking about this same problem that 
there had been an issue with their card and it turned out that if your card was a foreign card the uh, the website couldn't process it all too well um, and just outright declined in foreign cards but then the strange thing was was that if that was happening they would tell you to go to another page to buy a different to buy the same ticket from a different uh, from a different website and this website the tickets were both more expensive and uh, didn't give you the option of a day ticket but you could only buy a free day ticket so I kind of felt like it, it kind of felt like they were deliberately trying to prevent tourists from being able to use the same services as the locals and indeed that's what other people were kind of uh, echoing as well that oh these tickets are only meant for the for the locals uh, tourists shouldn't be allowed to use them you know um, and I appreciate obviously we tourists get free travel but uh, at the same time uh, yeah taking that amount of money off someone's account so I messaged them I was like okay guys you know you're taking money out of my account can you cancel it oh no we can't it's a standing charge it will come out soon and they were like you know just just leave it for a few days and it'll come it'll come back in I was like okay fine so I did that I waited for a few days waited for the for the money to go back in and it didn't so I messaged them again I said come on guys man that's 150 that's 300 quid like I've got bills to pay I've got children to feed I've got responsibilities I've got things I need to be doing with that money I need it back in my account um, if you're gonna take it from me um, because bear in mind, I was only going to pay for one ticket, so I didn't exactly budget for 150 quid more. <laughs> and, um, yeah, long and short of it, they said, well, just keep waiting. And I was like, well, this is unacceptable, guys. Like, you've taken the money out of my account. This is your problem. Oh, what are we going to do about this? They said, oh, it's, it's not our problem, basically. So, long and short of it, SBB, you're a terrible service. Your trains are very good, very clean and very prompt and on time, but your actual service customer service is despicable I did get my money back in the end uh, but yeah getting here as you see was a bit of a nightmare but it was worth it buildings like that very very pretty so what's the plan well we're gonna go around Basel and just explore really um, we're not gonna spend any money because we don't have any to spend so this entire segment that you're going to see is, is what well, is going to be completely free already it's uh what time is it Tam? 11, 11 o'clock so we got out at about half 10 in the space of five minutes out of walking out of our door we were accosted by two beggars and someone trying to sell us merch <laughs> mad and that is at least i mean i've caught it on camera a few times like the amount of times i've been stopped by beggars in uh in Basel is in incredible and I don't blame them because it is so it's so expensive to live. I've heard some strange things actually. So I was I uh, was you know poking around uh, Reddit, reading some of the forums in uh, Switzerland and uh, and uh, just, uh, just a few like online blogs and stuff from uh, fellow travellers and people were saying that the locals tend to not eat meat or well, meat eating meat here is a luxury. And people tend to opt for salads because the cost of meat is so high that it's easier to be a vegetarian. Or cheaper to be a vegetarian than it is to eat meat and so meat is more of a i don't know if that's true if that is true let me know but if it is that's mad to have to decide between eating meat if you're a meat eater or to not do it because you simply can't afford to you know these are the kind of issues we don't have so we're near in the old town and uh one thing we've noticed is we might have already been here because here's the christmas market also noticed here look fc barzell 1893 Der Stadt, Stadt, Der Stadt, that's how you say it. So FC Basel is the local football team, um, or soccer team, depending on where you're from. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Fußball, Fußballspieler, Fußball, Fußballmannschaft, Fußball team, Fußballmannschaft, that's how you say it. Um, and I uh, ah, didn't notice this yesterday, but there's a rather nice looking church here. I'm gonna go down here and have a closer look. So here we are, this is a uh, Munsterplatz. Heard a lot about this place. And uh, it's just predominantly full of Instagrammers. <laughs> and if you guys watch my channel, 
you will know how much I love Instagrammers. Old, young, regardless. <laughs> but yeah, that's not a bad little, uh, bad little building. And this is a typical scene that you may see here in Basel. And we'll have a look at the uh, Christmas market. Gymnasium and Munsterplatz. I'm sure like a gymnasium is like a school. It means a different thing in these parts of the world than it does uh, in the UK. Gymnasium means like a gym, somewhere you go and work out. So I might as well look around the Christmas market, see what we've got. So what would you expect to see at a Christmas market? So you've got, they're still selling crafts. What is that A new age stall selling you know, very cool items, I must admit. If I had the money, I'd go and look over there. Place selling scarves and stuff like that. No prices labelled at the moment. I always get a bit suspicious if prices ain't labelled. <laughs> um, again, more kind of crafts, like Christmas crafts, wooden things and stuff like that. So, eight for that and that. Pretty good deal, actually. I must admit, that's what you're paying in the UK. It should have gone. Uh, what else do we have? So yeah, I went to uh, Edinburgh Market recently and that was very expensive. Like, it literally, I saw like some chips with cheese in it for like 11 quid. I was like, yeah, I don't think so, mate. <laughs> Place selling cards and Christmas stuff. A place selling jewellery and looks like uh, Indian themed garments and ornaments. A place selling more trinkets and stuff you'd find in a pound shop. You even got a free tour of a Christmas market. How lucky are you guys? Look. Place selling uh, little houses. How much do these cost? So, 45 for that, 43, 58. Except Visa though, so if I've got a spare 50 quid, I might buy a little house. <laughs> Wallets and bags here. Some China cups. More crafty bits. Ornaments, jewelry. Candles, candles, a very nice fountain, it should have been, danke. Uh, you've got a place here selling what looks like um, shortbread, oh well it's not shortbread, it would be whatever the equivalent is in here. Geschenk pack, geschenk, geschenk pickel. Is it ear? Is that an ear? I think that's an ear. Geschenk pickel. That's how you say that, eh? Wir Hedsli. Hausgemachte Glühwein. Five, five pounds, roughly, for a cup, which is, well, there you go. One of them. With Glühwein. What else do we have? We have, I think it's pronounced Rasset, Rasset, which is like, that's the cheese thing we had in the Christmas market recently. When we did our Christmas market video, we've got a place which sells food, Glühwein again, a place that sells Glühwein, a place that sells potatoes and Glühwein. <laughs> A place that sells Christmas baubles. How much does that things cost here? So, a portion of chips, basically 20 euros. Fondue for two people, 26.50. Some homemade curry sauces, some nuts and sweets. A little place you can go and sit and have a drink. More blue vine. <laughs> More crafts. More food stands. 
more glühwein <laughs> Some very nice looking pretzels. Hamburger is 10, that's about what you'd pay in the UK. Uh, in these kind of Christmas markets. Actually, no, I think hamburger from a Christmas market, how much would you pay in the UK, Tom? About five. It's probably about double what you'd pay in the UK. Roughly. Depends what Christmas market. If you go to the one in Edinburgh, that's probably about right, actually. And there you go. Tour done. That is a Christmas market in, or the, one of the main Christmas markets in Munsterplatz. So again, didn't want to try and be over complimentary there and uh, show you, or kind of start trying to hype it up. It really is just um, baubles, trinkets, 15 different types of blue vine. And uh, yeah, again, I'm not hating, it's the same in the UK. The Christmas market is very much the, the same stuff but it's a little bit more affordable so you can kind of uh justify going to it but we wanted to come to Munsterplatz anyway to see what it was like so here it is Munsterplatz there's the sign for it and then that's your typical view all right Tam so what are your first thoughts of Basel very pretty yep but, um, not really much here. Nah, to be honest, it's, it is really just like any other European city. I think the problem is we've been to quite a few of them now. So uh, it's, it's, it's very nice to look at, but um, yeah, it's uh, essentially just a European city, a flowing river, a nice bridge. I mean, you'll get that Prague, London, you know, Vienna various different places again not hating just giving our thoughts our honest thoughts um, there's nothing that's really kind of caught our eye yet but rest assured Switzerland the Swiss Alps are the most beautiful thing we've ever seen oh, yeah. it is it is the mo it is top of our list in the most beautiful things we've I ever seen I would recommend anyone to go and to we would 100% recommend anyone go to the Swiss Alps but in terms of Basel no. yeah not in a rush but there you go you can see how windy it is today it's very windy yeah <laughs> how quick the river is flowing it's flowing yeah isn't it So some very interesting artwork. Very nice. So in typical Team McGrath fashion, we've uh, decided to jump on a tram and leave the more touristy areas and go and have a little look around uh, some of the more residential places or the, where the people live outside of the the more kind of uh, quaint areas as you could call it, as, as some would call them um that's what we're about here we try to give a fair view of both sides of the coin so i think it'd be disingenuous to go and show you all of the markets and all the beautiful old buildings in the flowing river and not show you the graffiti and the uh just the more residential areas i guess if you're curious like because i don't think youtube is really focus on that side of things they just go here look there's this really nice like river oh there's this really nice like stream oh there's this really nice thing over here and they don't they don't focus on uh on the other side of that coin you know well what's it like for the people that live there i always say that what's it like for people that live there what's the residential areas like what's the back streets like what's the you know what's the, what's 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 going on in a, in a normal place in Basel? And I think that's the part that the YouTubers quite often leave out. And I personally think that's a little bit disingenuous myself. I think it's like well, <laughs> but it depends really. I guess it depends. Like you might want your city painted out to be this perfect canvas, or you might feel like it's uh, 
an unfair representation. You might feel like it's uh, a, uh, a myth, basically. Oh, you guys are all here looking at this uh, city. It's beautiful and stuff, but you don't see what it's, got, what it's like for me. So I try to, but I don't know. This, this could be a posh area for all I know and a really nice place, but it's not in the touristy districts anymore. And uh, I do try to provide at least a kind of well-rounded view of a place where I can. So yeah, let's see what a typical street in uh, Barzell looks like. Just stopping up here for lunch. And uh, it's like this nice fountain. I've seen people like hold their bottles underneath these things and uh, get drinking water from them. But because I don't know if every single fountain you're able to do that, I don't want to risk it. But yeah, I saw some people doing that earlier. But for lunch we have a leftover bag of crisps from yesterday <clears throat> and the leftover biscuits from yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, that cost us 20 quid. So that did our dinner for yesterday as well as our lunch and breakfast for today. Happy days. <laughs> but it's Tammy's eating, I'm gonna go up and do a little bit of a walk about and see what, what kind of place we're in. One thing I've noticed about Basel is so much graffiti. Very similar to Greece. Like before I went to Greece, I didn't realise just how much graffiti there would be. Some of it's actually quite good though. Like you've got that kind of stuff, which is just yeah, your typical kind of street gang or gang member or maybe just a youth graffiti. And then you've got the more upscale graffiti. And then you've got the more high-end graffiti. That's very good. I'm actually rather impressed. And then right next to that, <laughs> you've got that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, this is what a residential block looks like in uh, Basel. And this is what a residential street, I guess, looks like. interesting fact about the airport in Baza is that it's actually uh, actually in the French part so um, it's in a place called Saint Louis um, which is actually in France technically so uh, we're technically now in France which is pretty cool so two countries for one well we're here in the airport waiting for our flight home and uh, just uh, madam here had a bit of a that was horrible a bit of an experience so obviously put everything in the tray to go through my bag goes through fine my coat goes through fine I walk through beep 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 oh I was like I've got nothing on me so they sent me back told me to cross my arms so I did that beep 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 and then I got patted down there still couldn't find nothing then I got taken into the room the interrogation room and another female had to come in um, and walked in this room and I was, I was cacking myself, you know, never happened to me before. I was like, oh, bloody hell, you know, what's going on here sort of thing. And then I walked in this room and there was this chair and they were all like, sit on the chair. And I was like, fuck, mind my language, you know, I'm still a bit, <coughs> never happened to me before. And like this one, it's normally him. And um, neither of them spoke English. So they had to like, they imitated what they wanted me to do and I had to lift my top up and basically put my boobs on show. <laughs> she got a free, uh, free touchdown basically. I, I did, you know, but it turns out that the detail on my bra is, is what set the alarms off, but it didn't set it off in England. If it's mm. consolation as well, I set off the alarms as well. I completely forgot that my mobile phone was in my pocket, set off the alarms, went through. I remembered everything but my, um, my, my mobile phone. Thankfully the guy was quite understanding. He was like, oh, your mobile's in your pocket. Just stick it in that basket and try again. Went through, set it off again. He was like, okay, come through, but this time put your arms in like that. I did it and he was like, yeah, there you go, mate. Go through like that. Good to go. Yeah, that's it. Like cross like your that. arms over. And after that, yeah, it was no problem. So um, yeah. did that. And now we're sat here waiting for gate 22 
to get us back to sunny old England. So yeah, we hope you've enjoyed our Swiss adventure. Mm. We're going to go back now and uh, get ready for Christmas and yeah, wish us luck on that. We hope you enjoyed watching today. Hope you've enjoyed Barzell and uh, we'll catch you again very soon for the next adventure. Take care people.